All right, this is a continuation of the Amazing Me Mechatronics, and we're looking at Arduinos. And in the previous lesson, we learned how to program a single Arduino. And we reviewed, for example, we covered what were resistors and what they did. Now, as I'm just going to go through this real fast, and there's our spark board. We learned the different parts of the code and reverb. We learned that slash star and star slash. Lost to do comments and just two slashes right in front. And we, so here's, for example, here's a multi line comment. Here's comments in between the two. We asked about what these were. And we consider them calling containers. We associate those generally with functions. You also can associate those with for loops, and you'll see down the road. All right. As opposed to using a semicolon. All right. And so let me get right. I would really like to get to. Um, so when we did a program, simple program right off the bat was we made an integer called LED pin. We assigned it to 13. Here's the here's how we do a naming this uh, variable LED pin. We assign the value 13. Programming we write read almost right to left in this instance. 13 to LED pin. It's also this uh, this variable is an integer. All all Sketch programs require a void setup and a void loop. We have a, it's a void, meaning it doesn't return a value. Setup, parentheses, parentheses, that tells it's a function. Here's our two containers. Here's our void loop. Two containers, bracket, and bracket. So you should count. Those should all count at, up and add up. In other words, if you've got one up here, there should be the matching one below it. And if you're in... Um, if you click on this in our in the software, this one will show up. So it'll show you your matching. Now, in this case, we had a function we see in void set up most of the time called pin mode. Pin mode tells us if the pin is going to be an output or an input. LEDs are outputs. A motor is an output. Input would be a touch sensor. Those are inputs. So this says pin mode, capital M on mode, parentheses, LED pin, comma, output parentheses semicolon so that's making an LED pin now you can run turn on an LED pin without this command this function but it'll be dimmer this will get you the full 5 volts the other version way gets you I think around 3 volts then you go to void loop we say digital write LED pin since it's a digital write digital means it's either high or low there's on or off true or false it does not mean warm for example so it is on or off. So this turns it on high, which in this case means on. Wait 1,000 milliseconds, a second. Then turn LED pin low and delay a second. And we talked about you could make it blink faster by put it, changing the delay. All right. So that was how we did one program. Notice after each one of these have semicolons. After void loop, the function, and then the containers. Don't worry, you'll start to learn that after a while. It'll become second nature to you. Then we did two LEDs. Now we're hooked up to two pins. You could be hooked up to one pin, but then your code would control both LEDs identically. So we have two different output pins, so we can control them individually. They can share the same ground. All right, so now going back to this again, we could set up and we do LED pin 1, LED pin 2, 9 and 10, we're going to initialize as an output. So what would we need to do? So with one variable, we did LED pin 1. Like last time, we said that to pin 9. If I want to add a second variable called for pin 2, there's integer LED pin 2 equals 10. Now under pin mode, before I show you, think about this. I have pin mode LED pin 1 output. But what about LED pin 2? How would I go ahead and define that as an output? And then I've got to be able to put that in the loop. Why don't you take a minute and see if you can figure this out. Pause me and then unpause me after you've tried it. See how it works out. All right. Well, for the output, we just add that second pin in. Pin mode, LED pin 2. Make that an output. And then down here, not surprisingly, the void loop has to display right LED pin 1 high, LED pin 2 high. Wait a second. LED pin 1 low, LED pin 2 low. And there was the other second. So there we are on this, okay?
And one thing you can try to do, could you make a traffic light? That's a good practice. If you're seeing this for the first time again, remember, we want to see if people can make a traffic light. There you have the one light green for three seconds, middle light yellow. And you don't have to have lights. You can have them just in order. A middle light yellow, we're going to say that's on for a second. Bottom lights red is on for four seconds. So if you think about it, when the red light's on, these two lights have to be off. When the yellow's on, this light and this light needs to be off. When the green's on, the yellow and red are off. And the code could look something like this. Go ahead and pause it if you build it and you were looking to check your answer. If all you're doing is writing down the code after I've given it to you, you're not learning programming. All right? In the beginning, that's fine, but now you need to try to figure it out without just copying the code down. All right, now, here we're going to get to multiple LEDs. And to do this, you need to have these eight LEDs. So you're going to need your 330 resistor, your LEDs. Uh, here's your 330 resistor. Here's your LED. Notice the cathode or negative leg there. Anode, the positive or longer leg right up here. And it's connected to each one of these pins. Pins 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Start at 2, end up 9. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. If you don't have that, hook it up. Pause this, hook it up, then come back. Now, I'm hoping by now you tried to do it. And... Go ahead and see if you could program it. But before you do that, I would like to show you another technique because we're going to learn how to program it. Now, you saw with LED pin 2, we could add an output. We made another variable. And we then included them down here. That's a lot of cutting and pasting. And you might start to think, well, I could do that some more. But that really isn't practical. You imagine having to copy and paste that all the way down. And, okay, that's, you know say eight pins what happens if you had three thousand pins you're not going to want to copy and paste that much all right and this is why we have something about loops loops allow you to repeat a command over and over again so for an example four integer counter equals zero this is a for loop counter is less than ten counter increases by one print counter so four this makes a variable called counter. It initializes, starts at zero. It runs. This loop keeps going around and around until um, this hit reaches 10. It's got to be less than 10. Every time it goes around, counter gets added one to it in this case. You could have counter plus plus. You can make it two. You can make it minus. You can make it minus minus. You can make it um, plus two. And it would go up by two every other time. And then this print line serial monitor would show it up as a counter okay so hopefully you said how many numbers would be printed out hopefully you figured out zero one two three four five six seven eight nine because you can't go to ten and that would be ten because you're starting at zero remember in computers we don't like to waste memory space so uh, we start at zero we don't start at um, one all right So, let's see how this would save us work. Say, for example, you've hooked up your LEDs to pin 2, as we said, up through pin 9. Well, what this would do is it would start at 2 until it reached 10. It wouldn't do it at 10. And it would increase by 1 every time. So, pin mode. So, counter starts off. First time through, this is 2. 2 pin. So, that pin mode, or 2, which is the same thing as saying pin 2, is an output. Then, next, then would increase it by 1. It would say... Oh, pin th 3, or which would be pin 3, make that an output. And we keep doing it, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it would not do 10. So, here it is, right there. This is what you could do if you had to cut and paste it. And that just doesn't get practical as you get more and more numbers here. Alright. Now, so that helps us do output so as we look at this again this saved us all that work see how we use that counter and we're going it's the same thing as this but much faster and what's great is if you decided oh man we need to do more of these you could change that less than 12 and it would automatically start at 2 you could change it at 0 increase it but you only have to change two things you're not copying and pasting more bits of code so Let's try this. 
let's go ahead and brighten up all our LEDs. So you have void setup, integer counter equals 2, semicolon, counter less than 10, counter plus plus. Pin mode counter output. So you're making that, you've got a loop, and then we're going to make that function right in there. So it's inside the void setup. Then there's our 4. Notice the 4 also has its containers. And pin mode, which has got a semicolon, is inside that. And then the void setup containers are here. So let's do void loop. The void loop containers are on the outside. And here's our for loop. 4, integer counter equals 2, counter less than 10, which we've been saying. Counter increases by 1. Digital right counter is high. Delay a second. Digital right 1, counter low. Delay a second and come around again. This, if we're using eight lights and we didn't have loops, it would be something like this. Every one of them we'd have to say hi individually. And then every one of them we have to say low. So the for loop makes this so much faster, folks. Then we can do something where we have all the lights flash on at once. This was individually. Now we can get it so all the lights flash. All lights flash on at once and then all shut off. All right, as opposed to turning off, so four energy counter, two to less than ten, digital right counter high. So the void setup was just the same. Void loop, now we add an additional loop to what you already had. And before you add this additional loop, this first file program, give it a new name. Say, give that and save it, and give start this program and give it a new name. The reason you do this is so if you make a mistake in this program, you still can get back your old program. Alright, so in the second loop, notice the for loop, it has its containers. Notice the void loop has a container here and a container here. This for loop is parentheses, no semicolon, container, container. If it has containers, it usually doesn't have uh, semicolons after it. And this for loop is container, container. The function's inside, display right counter high, colon. Delay a second. So this goes through, through 2 through 9, makes them all output. And sets them all on the high. Four energy counter, two less than counter ten. Write them all low. And wait a second. So this wrote them all high. This writes them all low. So what will happen is these will all go bright. And then these will all go low. And it will happen so there will be this delay between the two. But um, these actually the loop inside here. This four loop where you set to high or this four loop to low happens so fast it, you instantaneously think all the lights came on and then a second later all the lights went off all right and so there it is all the code of the whole thing together you don't get try this at home if you don't get it to work um, start looking at it line by line make sure you have your semicolons in here make sure you spelt your integer counter variable correctly all right Now, how do we show the LEDs lighting up one right after another? All right. We are going to use something called P... Um, let me show you this right now. We'll get to the PWM in a moment here. Let me go ahead and show you this. All right, so you get 2 to 10. You have your output again. Now, you're going to go ahead do the same thing but you're going to slow it down there's going to be a slight delay so you're going to write digital right counter high pause quarter of a second and then go back up and reloop all right so if i show you this one can you make them all go low try to do it without looking at this code below here So anyways, back, we do the same thing on top. We have display right counter low, but then we put a delay. So that way, the lights individually go one on right after another because they're paused for about a quarter of a second, 250 or 1,000. Yeah, and there's the delays right there. And then all the pins are set to high. How do we turn off pins 9 and then 8 and pin 7, etc.? So how do you go backwards? So if all lights go on, can we go back up and down? That's kind of a cool effect. 
if you use this command right here, so we have this is 2 to 10, we make them all output, so they loop up here. In this case, 2 to 10, we all send them to high, so they all loop up. But now, what happens if I do this? For counter starting at 9, go until counter is greater than or equal to 2, semicolon counter minus minus. Well, that's going to cause, and then you do display right, counter low, 250. So this is going to start off where you're starting at pin 9, you're going to turn it to low, and you're going to make it do a delay before it goes to the next pin. So that will look like the lights run up to the top and then start blinking back down the other way. Go ahead and try it. We talked a little bit about pulse width modulation. Um, this is, comes out of our Arduino workshop book. Um, great book. I can highly recommend it. Um, Arduino workshop. Hands-on introduction to 65 projects. Great book on this. All right. And what we're doing with, uh, with pulse width modulation, we're thinking our eyes are going to fade. We think we're giving some... We make a digital object feel more like it's analog. What it is is we go to 5 volts, but we don't leave it on the whole time. We spike it with 5 volts, if you can think of it that way. And the longer you leave the 5 seconds on, the more it just comes on. It, but if you spike it, say, 60 or 40%, so it's only 40% of the time it's spiking the 5 volts, it's going to appear dimmer than up here. So we can use that if we have pins that are pulse width modulated. The good news is we do. These pins right here, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11. All right, 3, 6, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11. Are all ca capable. They can handle pulse width modulation. 7 and 8 cannot. 6 can, 3 can, 4 can, 2 can. All right. And so, on the blue ones, it might not say pulse width modulation, but it's any of the tithes, and they don't have it down here, but they still have the same pins. 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11. So let's begin by dimming LED pin 3. And um, we're going to go ahead and um, start this with the LED pin 3. So what you're going to do is make pin mode 3 an output. We've done this. You probably want to go ahead and start another program. That wouldn't be a bad idea. All right. And what we're going to do is pin 3. So you got pin 3 output. You're going to do void loop. Pin 3 is PW cable. So you're going to say analog right, pin 3, 255. Notice that's not true or false. High or low, it's just... Um, the highest value, it's setting a value if it'll help you. Wait a second, set the value down from 3, now down to 50. You're going to get a dimmer choice. You could have gone anywhere from 255 down to 0. Well, then wait a second. All right. Now, what I would say is, that's the end of this tutorial, and we'll get into more elaborate work with PWM. All right, and that's what um, the next one will be about. But just, again, PWM allows you to use a function called analog write, so you could set anything between 3, uh, pin for pin 3, it could be anything from a value of 255 all the way down to 0. And there's 350. All right, so, and it all depends on the threshold of the LED, too, on, on some of this, but we're not going to get into that today. We're working on programming. All right. Thank you very much.